I was reading something earlier today that I thought was pretty interesting. That is, until I read enough to see just how stupid it actually was. The article was from USA Today and was about banning job interview questions about past salary. Which at first I thought, well, that seems pretty stupid, trying to enforce something that doesn't seem all that important. But on the upside, it could potentially give more bargaining power to potential employees when negotiating a salary. But then I remembered something. Women are bad at negotiating. Okay, okay, it's not that simple. But it's basically true. Women often negotiate less often and don't shoot for as high of a pay when negotiating. So if we create a situation where employees are better able to negotiate higher pay, but if women are probably less likely to use that to its full advantage, isn't that going to create a difference in pay? And then that difference is undoubtedly going to be called sexist by feminists and the radical left, which is kind of funny when you think about it. I mean, we have a situation where even if we give these people what they want, they still won't be happy. But if you think my pondering this topic was just me getting worked up about nothing, let me actually go into the article. It starts out pretty mellow and goes full on batshit crazy after only about a couple of paragraphs. It says, we know that when employers see some past salary, they're likely to take that into account in setting the employee's starting pay, says Emily Martin, general counselor for the National Women's Law Center. As a result, too often, when women are paid less than men, that pay disparity can follow them from job to job. In fact, she says the gender pay gap widens as women age, supporting the theory that employers are relying too heavily on previous salaries. Well, sorry, USA Today, but there isn't a gender pay gap. There is an earnings gap, and yes, that does widen with age. And that earnings gap is due to a number of factors, including the negotiating differences I mentioned earlier, but also due to taking different jobs and having children. This is, of course, a lot of information to unpack, but you need not just take my word for it. Look at the data and you'll see for yourself. For example, we can look at Pew Research, and what we find is that the gender pay gap they're talking about, which they claim is 17%, becomes only 10% when we're talking about workers between 25 and 34. But that's not nothing. However, if we look at what's actually being measured, that 10% is for all women and all men of that age. No difference in job is being taken into account. And I'll leave a link to the Pew article so you can see that for yourself. But they mention the main reason for the difference being women taking time off and needing more flexibility. It also continues on to say that some of the difference is likely due to discrimination. And yeah, that's probably true. But what percentage? 5%? 1%? Less than that? We don't really know, but the fact is, it doesn't seem to be that huge of a difference. Which is not to say that it's not a problem, but I think it's a problem that should be addressed on a case-by-case -case basis like any crime. Gender pay discrimination is illegal in the United States, after all. There's also an article from Freakonomics.com that agrees with what I've been saying. It says, It is this pursuit of what Claudia Golden, a professor of economics at Harvard University, calls temporal flexibility that Golden sees as perhaps the most powerful explanation for the gender pay gap, and she told us, It doesn't seem as though outright discrimination or differences in competitive drive or bargaining ability can account for much of the difference, but that need or desire for flexibility in the workplace leads to a split that's very clear in the data, a split that has to do with job selection. And what exactly is so bad about that? We need the human species to live on, so we need children. We also need someone to look after those children. In some cases, the second parent looking for work would mean paying for daycare, which is extremely expensive, and in some cases, maybe more than the second parent will be paid anyway. So what's the point of getting a job if all of it's going to daycare? But look, I'm all for the empowerment of women. I absolutely think people should have the ability to get a good education, regardless of any immutable characteristic. But that doesn't mean the work women have traditionally done is somehow less valuable. Raising children and keeping an entire home clean can be a full-time job. And that isn't to say that women need to be the ones to stay home and do it. I think the decision should be left up to the individuals, because it's their lives after all. But from this, we see a problem. If women have children, and so some of them want to take care of the children, and due to the fact that women are the ones who give birth, it makes sense that women would have a greater attachment that could, not always, but could, cause women to be more motivated to look after their offspring than the father. And so the father may decide that his role in raising the children will be best served as being a provider. But even if this only happens for a small portion of the children's life, then there will still be differences in earnings over time, and those differences will be greater as more time passes and more children are born. 
So when it comes down to it, I think we should stop worrying about what other people want to do with their lives. We don't need 50-50 gender balance in all fields because due to differences in the choices men and women make, there are differences in the type of jobs they pick. So the only way to correct that is to force women to stop having children, or to force women to take jobs they might not even want, or actively discriminate against men to make sure you fill some woman quota. All three options I would consider to be unacceptable. The final option is that we realize that men and women make different decisions on average, and that this is likely due to differences in biology, like the fact that men can't have babies. And we let people do what they want, and then, when actual discrimination happens, we treat it like any other crime where we have an investigation and provide evidence to a court. But of course, no one's going to agree with this conclusion until they've already realized that the gender pay gap is a myth. So until we've thoroughly dispelled this belief, we're going to have to keep having this discussion. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy my work, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also rate this video, you can comment, and you can follow me on social media. The links are in the description. Thanks for watching. See you next time.